thermochemical equations. Wow, how fancy is that? Can you imagine telling at home today, oh no, I, I just learned about thermochemical equations at school. <laughs> how cool is that? All right, so, but it's a very, very fancy uh, name, but in reality, what a thermochemical equation is, is just an expression to relate the change in energy of a chemical reaction and you can also say if the reaction is endo or exothermic. So before we go into more detail, we need to clarify a couple of basic concepts. And these two terms are entropy and enthalpy. Entropy is uh, found in books, textbooks, as the randomness of a system. You know, I prefer short words. I would like to call it chaos. The more chaotic, the more entropy. And enthalpy talks about the energy content of a system. Well, in chemistry, you have initial state and a final state. We normally call the initial state the reactant side. And the final state, we call it the product side. So, for enthalpy, you need to compare the energy content of um, this uh, initial state versus the final state. Let's imagine that the initial state has more energy than the final state. That means that the reaction lost some energy to the environment. But, if the final state has more energy, that means that this system, this chemical system, gained some energy in the process. That will be endothermic. But we will talk about that later. Going back to entropy, good words to describe entropy are randomness, disorder, and chaos. Um, but we need to talk uh, in terms of chemical systems. But let's make an analogy here. So let's imagine, use your imagination, I'm not a good artist. We have this ice cube. And we have over here liquid water. Which one has more entropy? In other words, which one has more disorder? Of course, in this one, molecules are very well organized. Right? That's why you have the crystal structure of ice. On the other hand, in here, there's a lot of chaos. It's very disorganized. So the one with the highest entropy between the ice cube and the liquid water, of course, is going to be our liquid water. This one has more entropy. So let's make this look like a little chemical reaction. So let's imagine that we have H2O in solid state. That's what the S stands for. And... All of a sudden, we have on the other side, same H2O, but now in the liquid state, that's an L. So this is a chemical reaction, not a chemical reaction, this is a chemical system. This chemical system uh, increases the entropy because you have a lot more entropy over here, more disorder and more chaos than you have over here in this uh, solid state on the ice on this side. So this system increased the entropy. And entropy is represented by delta S. Okay, so what happens if a system has an increase on the entropy? That means that it's becoming more disorganized. If the system decrease the entropy, the total entropy is going to be, the change in entropy is going to be less than zero, and if the system does not experience any change in entropy, that means that the change in entropy is going to be zero, of course. So in this case, you have more chaos. This means that you have a positive number for delta S. Less than zero means negative number, of course. So a positive number, positive number, a positive number 
for the delta s of course is going to represent an increase in the entropy enthalpy now is uh, seen as the energy contents of a system so if you are uh, reading about the change in enthalpy you are reading about the change in the energy content of a particular system in chemical reactions what we see normally is, remember, we see an initial state this will be our reactant then we see a process that takes place, place and this is the final state the altitude in here is going to represent the energy content so we can call this let's call this graph over here, this will be the energy and this will be the time that the reaction takes to proceed so in here we have again our initial state is going to be our reactants and our final state is going to be our products so enthalpy is um, found in books as delta H now let's see the initial state has a bigger number a bigger amount than the final state right so you have to figure out first um, what type of energy change are you going to have so it's always the final state or products I'm talking about energy minus the energy of the reactants so you see in here that the product is going to be a small number and the reactants is going to be a big number so if you take a small number and subtract a big number what you get you get a negative number See, when delta H is negative, that means that the reaction is exothermic. Hold on, what do you mean by exothermic? Well, it is exothermic because, as you can see, at the beginning you had this much energy. This was the energy that you had at the beginning. And all of a sudden at the end, you only have this little bit of energy. Only this tiny bit of energy. That means that in this process, you lose some energy to the environment remember that energy is heat so if this reaction is releasing heat that means that is exothermic exo means going out so this reaction is releasing heat therefore is exothermic just because the final state the product has less energy than it had at the beginning now let's see what happens when the opposite occurs so let's say that you start with this amount of energy over here this is your initial state your reactants right initial state and after the chemical process takes place you end up with this energy state at the end this is your product the final state again you subtract the products minus the reactants in terms of energy that's going to give you the enthalpy now you have a big number minus a small number and when you have that situation of course you have a positive total so when you have a positive delta H a positive enthalpy that means that your reaction is endothermic hmm. endothermic how come well look at this you start with this little bit of energy in this chemical process all of a sudden at the end you have this much energy a lot more than you had at the beginning the only explanation is that in this chemical process you gain energy so you got some energy from the surroundings so energy is flowing in, is going inside of this chemical reaction therefore we call it you know how endothermic because endo means going in so when you have a positive delta H that means that you are in front of an endothermic reaction I hope you understand terms endo and exothermic and also how to read these graphics over here let's analyze this chemical reaction in terms, of, in terms of entropy and enthalpy so let's look at the entropy the randomness, the chaos so let's look at the initial state our initial state has two moles of gas over here and one more of gas over here so we have three gas molecules on the left <laughs> look at the right you don't have gases 
you have liquid. That means that the system is less random. Remember, random is the entropy. So the entropy decreased because you went from high entropy to low entropy. So the entropy went down. But in here we're analyzing also the enthalpy. In here, I almost forgot to write down, this is a negative, it's a negative sign right here, this is a negative 571. Let's make it very negative. All right, so what does that mean, having a negative enthalpy? Well, if we remember the, our previous graph, we know that a negative enthalpy means that you have less energy at the end than what you have at the beginning, which means that this reaction did lose some energy in the process. So it gave off, gave away, released some heat, some energy. So a negative enthalpy, is if this enthalpy is negative, which in this case is negative 571, this reaction is going to be, of course, exothermic. So just by looking at this number, delta H, you can tell if a reaction is endo or exothermic. Negative delta H, exothermic, because you are releasing heat, because you have a smaller energy state at the end than what you have at the beginning.